It's Saturday, March 14th. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. And breaking news, yesterday, Friday, Delta announced it's grounding a full one-third of its fleet of airliners. Stay tuned for an update. We're finally getting some rain and snow here at the Blanco Lirio World Global Headquarters. Much needed rain and snow here in Northern California after one of the driest stretches of weather on record for the month of February stretching into March. So this will be a great bonus to our water situation here in the High Sierra and the reservoirs in Northern California. Back during the Great Recession of 2008-2009, the airlines here in the United States went through a series of bankruptcies and consolidations and set the airlines up for a condition where they could weather a downturn in the economy better than they ever could before. But with recent events in the economy, airlines have cut back, have reportedly cut back flights as much as 15 to 20 percent. But this news from Delta yesterday, Friday, is the, uh, the sound of the other shoe dropping. So let's get the letter directly from the CEO of Delta, Ed Bastian, and find out what's going on at Delta, because this may be a watershed for some of the rest of the uh, U.S. airlines. Ed writes, to the Delta people worldwide, the challenge facing us. Demand for travel is declining at an accelerated pace daily, driving an unprecedented revenue impact. Cancellations are rising dramatically, with net bookings now negative for travel over the next four weeks. To put that in perspective, we're currently seeing more cancellations than new bookings over the next month. The speed of the demand fall-off is unlike anything we've seen and we've seen a lot in our business. We are moving quickly to preserve cash and protect our company. And with revenues dropping, we must be focused on taking costs out of the business. A couple of things. Delta Airlines has always been the darling of the industry, always having the best contracts, the best pilot contracts, as far as I know, and the best working conditions. This is, this is rather stunning news from, from Delta Airlines. And as I said before in previous updates, an airline aircraft is like a great white shark. It needs to swim in order to stay alive, to move the water, the oxygen through its gills. An airline aircraft needs to keep flying with paying revenue passengers on board in order to pay for itself. When those aircraft get park, parked, the fixed costs associated with that airplane sinks it immediately. So in order to do this, back to Ed's letter from Delta Airlines, we're taking a difficult and determined actions to protect the financial position of the company, and these include an overall capacity reduction in the next few months of 40%, 40%, the largest capacity reduction in Delta's history, including 2001. So this is greater than 9-11 and the, um, the recession probably combined as far as speed and acceleration of this. Elimination of flying to continental Europe for the next 30 days, which could be extended. We will maintain service to London for now. Parking up to 300 aircraft as our reduced capacity requires a substantially smaller fleet. The entire Delta fleet is 900 aircraft. That's a full third of their fleet. Deferring new aircraft deliveries to manage our reduced capacity and preserve cash. Remember all those 737 MAX orders? Reducing capital expenditures by at least two billion, two billion with a B, for the year, including delaying aircraft mods, IT initiatives, and other opportunities to preserve cash. The average major airline nowadays requires about $77 million per day to keep the lights on at, at, the, at the airlines for each individual major U.S. airline. It's all about cash flow. Immediately offering voluntary short-term unpaid leaves as well as an immediate hiring freeze. And I think this has happened across the line from all four major airlines here in the U.S. They have frozen hiring. Remember, we're in the, this unprecedented uh, pilot shortage. Hiring has been going great guns, over 1,100 pilots per year. 
that has been shut off for the foreseeable future. And this is going to allow training to catch up, especially if they have to retrain and reassign people to different aircraft. And substantially reducing the use of consultants and contractors. We'll be making more critical decisions on our response in days to come. The situation is fluid and likely to be getting worse. <laughs> and then Ed, Ed reassures us that in light of these developments, I'm forgoing 100% of my salary effective immediately for the next six months. Well, Ed, uh, I hope you can survive on six months worth of airline CEO salary. And then he writes, I know many of the newer Deltas of the Delta family have never experienced this level of uncertainty in our business. Your veteran colleagues will tell you that we have been through turbulent times before and what has always carried us through has been our commitment to our values and our culture and to each other. I'm confident that we will emerge from this crisis as a strong, trusted global brand that truly connects the world like no other. So, stunning news from Delta Airlines. Is this going to ripple through the rest of the industry? Stay tuned. Let's see. Internationally, we've already seen the loss of Flybe Airlines over in Europe, and the next European airline that folks are watching very closely is Norwegian Air. Stand by for news. In other airline news, another crack in the crown structure of an older model Boeing 737 was found on a Southwest Airlines jet yesterday on a flight from Las Vegas to Boise, a crack occurred in the crown structure, which is on top of the fuselage. This was published in the Wall Street Journal. U.S. safety officials are investigating potential structural problems affecting hundreds of Boeing 737 jets. These are earlier model 737s, obviously not the MAX, because the MAX is still grounded. Following an in-flight incident that left a 12-inch rupture in the aluminum skin of a Southwest Airlines plane. Nobody was hurt. Las Vegas to Boise, the flight was. The aircraft damage, the damaged aircraft descended to a safe altitude and the pilots landed at their destination. According to the FAA, the plane's cabin gradually lost pressure, but it stabilized after the pilots descended to a lower altitude and the oxygen masks were never deployed. They went from 39,000 feet down to 22,000 feet and were able to maintain satisfactory cabin pressure altitude. Remember the Masks deploy at a cabin altitude of approximately 14,000 or 14,500 feet. The cabin altitude warning comes on about 10,000 to 10,500 feet cabin altitude. Remember, the airplane is a pressurized balloon, and each cycle or each flight, you got to inflate that balloon and deflate it. Well, that adds stress to the aircraft over the years, and over the years, cracks can develop, and this crown structure was similar and related to the many years ago loss of the whole entire top cabin of the Aloha Airlines flight. So there's been AD's airworthiness directives about this particular area over the years and according to the Wall Street Journal that AD required a inspection every 1500 cycles and on this aircraft it had been just 500 cycles since its last inspection. That inspection typically involves an eddy current inspection of the area in question. I'll have to do some more research. I believe there's an AD that allows you to repair that section and get rid of the recurring nature of that airworthiness directive. That'll take some research and we'll have to see if that AD is the one that applies to this particular situation. Southwest has told the FAA that previous mandated maintenance checks found external cracks on two other 737s in the same location as this one, but those cracks did not result in, D, in a cabin depressurization. So the FAA and Boeing are looking at this issue and deciding, deciding what they should do next with this airworthiness directive. It's going through the process on the earlier model Boeing 737s regarding cracks in the crown structure or on top of the fuselage, which can lead to rapid depressurization of the aircraft. Earlier this week, we sat down with flight instructor Dan Greider of Atlanta, Georgia, and had some very frank discussions about general aviation, bringing some airline-style training into general aviation, and bringing, well, and he had a lot of controversial things to discuss about the FAA and the NTSB. You've seen Dan Greider before on Flight Chops, 
YouTube channel and Aviation 101, and he came all the way out here to Northern California to reach out to you, the viewers of the Blanco Lirio channel, as we discuss, discuss aviation safety, particularly for general aviation. So I'll be getting those videos together and putting them out here shortly as well. So thanks for watching. Thanks for your support on Patreon. A lot of this, a lot of this content that I'm putting out nowadays deals with current events and YouTube is strongly demonetizing current events as as it falls under their sensitive event category. And so to that end, your support on Patreon is the only way that keeps this channel going at this time. And so I strongly recommend you come on over to Patreon and help support the channel. You can get on for as little as a dollar a month or $5 a month is the recommended level of patronage. And this just takes the whole YouTube demonetization problem out of the equation. If I get enough patrons over there, I could even turn off ads altogether on YouTube. Another problem with demonetized content on YouTube is they do not notify you when I post new videos. On Patreon, you get notified each time I post something new on Patreon. So stay tuned for more aviation updates as they become available. And right now, Sit back, relax, and enjoy the snowfall. We need it. See you here. Four to six feet expected in the Sierra from this storm.